Carolyn, you're in the media. Uh, before I began traveling to Israel a little over a decade ago, and I've been there many times since, I took the media's reports of the conflicts over there at face value. But now my perception is that there is a clear bias against Israel. In your view, is that perception valid? And if so, why is it the case? Um, yes, I agree with your view. In fact, you know, the truth is that uh, I went into journalism. It wasn't uh, it wasn't my plan. I started out uh, my career in the Israeli military and then uh, working for Prime Minister Netanyahu as his assistant foreign policy advisor back in his first stint in office in the 1990s. I ended up going into journalism in large part because I saw just how uh, the media was being used as a weapon against Israel and the Jewish people. That the uh, that the that the um, reports that were coming out in the Western press and, of course, in the Arab media, uh, were aimed at achieving a policy outcome rather than reflecting reality. And as a consequence, by and large, they didn't reflect reality. We saw this in any number of very gross instances. For instance, uh, 20 years ago. Uh, two Israeli reservists who uh, accidentally uh, entered into the Palestinian town of, of Ramallah on their way to their base were lynched by a mob of Palestinians uh, aided by the Palestinian security forces that were ostensibly Israel's uh, security partners and partners in peace. And there was a, a uh, an Italian camera crew there from Italian television, and they uh, and they filmed the lynching and their. And their footage of the lynching uh, then was um, uh, published, and uh, and uh, the day after it was published, uh, the journalist from the Italian television network, a man named Riccardo Cristiani, uh, published an abject apology to the Palestinian Authority, to the PLO, and to PLO chief uh, Yasser Arafat, groveling at their feet and demand and asking for forgiveness for having uh, done something that reflected badly on the noble Palestinian people. These these uh, Jewish uh, Israeli reservists were literally torn to pieces by a massive mob of bloodthirsty uh, 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 Palestinians who simply wanted to annihilate them because they were Jewish, and they did. And here we had an Italian journalist who was very emblematic of large swaths of the Western media, including AP, the New York Times, uh, and the major American television networks, as well as the BBC, Sky News, and others. Um, and he was groveling and saying he was sorry. He didn't mean to expose to the world the truth about the nature of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, Senator Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee actually spoke to that uh, very issue of the U.S. media. Uh, watch uh, what she had to say. Okay. You're also seeing some of the mainstream media that is coming out, MSNBC, uh, doubting whether Hamas is a terrorist organization. You have the Washington Post, seems to be a little bit upset that not enough Israelis have died in this. What we have to realize is there is not a moral equivalent between Hamas, a terrorist group, and Israel that is a nation. Caroline, what's driving this agenda with the media, that this, uh, this hatred toward Israel? Sorry, that uh, alarm in the background was just a notification from the Israeli military that there was another missile strike uh, just now, right now. Uh, it's happening in southern Israel. Um, what stands behind this at base is hatred of Jews, because um, essentially the it's not even bias. It's not that there's one side and then they tip in favor of the other a little bit. The, the actual uh, invention of reportage of, of stories in the media in the West against Israel, where they airbrush out the very nature of the forces arrayed against Israel, that these are terrorist organizations recognized as such by the U.S. government. Um, and the reason that they do it is because they don't think that Jews have a collective right to self-determination and political independence in our ancestral homeland. Um, just Jews, by the way, nobody else. Everybody else has a right to self-determination. And the fact that they hold Jews to a standard and uh, deny it the basic, the, deny us the basic rights that are accorded to every other nation on earth uh, is a very clear example of contemporary anti-Semitism. When you look at American policy toward Israel, and, and there seems to be some ambivalence right now. Um, uh, former Ambassador Dermer 
uh, made the comment about the, the, the strength of the ties between Israel and evangelicals. Uh, I want to play a clip of what he had to say on that. Great. The backbone of Israel's support in the world is the United States of America. And the backbone of that backbone are evangelicals, devout Christians who live in the United States. And I saw that I, I made it to 47 out of 50 states during my tenure as ambassador. And throughout America, there is enormous um, wellspring of support among devout Christians for the state of Israel. Uh, and we are deeply appreciative of it, uh, of it. And I hope that Christians will make their voices heard now. Caroline, do you see that uh, as being the case? I do. I think that uh, Ambassador Dermer is absolutely correct. I think that, you know, one of the things that, that is notable is that um, the Republican Party used to be sort of less supportive of Israel on balance than the Democratic Party was. We were talking back in the 1970s and, and earlier than that, and then into the, 19, the early 1980s. And that all started to change when? when evangelical Christians in the United States uh, moved their partisan affiliation from the Democrat Party to the Republican Party. There's absolutely no doubt that the backbone of American support for Israel, the bipartisan nature of it, but also the strength of that support uh, is, is uh, owes almost entirely to evangelical Christians. And so, yes, and, and, and it's not surprising really, right? Because the, the contemporary anti-Semitism that we're seeing today is sort of part and parcel of the left's abandonment of God. And uh, and you know the, the 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 good book tells us that uh, the Jewish people are are the people of of God, and uh, that Israel is our homeland. And so people who have a biblical have, have a literal interpretation of the Bible or take their Bible seriously um, understand the legitimacy and the justice of the return of the Jewish people to our homeland, and our establishment of our of our new of the third Jewish Commonwealth, the state of Israel. So I. I I understand that you know uh, because of the basis of the support is a scripture that you know the vicissitudes of politics and the you know the the comings and goings uh, the ebbs and tides of political fashion are unlikely to impact in a significant way uh, the evangelical support for Israel. And, and, you know, obviously we thank you and, and we hope that God blesses you for that support. And we depend on it uh, not only when, when uh, things are going well for Israel in Washington, but also when things are not going as well for, for Israel in Washington. Well, we do believe that God will bless us. That's uh, part of the promise of those that bless Israel. Um, and, and we want to stand with Israel. Um, of course, you go to the point that our, our view is based upon Scripture, and, and we're instructed to do this. And, and, of course, we've developed, those of us who have interacted more with Israeli people, we've developed a, a really a, a love for, for Israel and the Jewish people. Uh, but it's also what prompts us at times to speak to the Israeli government with things that we disagree with. Uh, because it comes out of that faith that we see the sanctity of human life. We see that the uh, human sexuality as God designed it, man and, and female. Uh, and we know that, uh, you know, Israel, like America, sometimes gets it wrong, and, uh, and we speak to those issues. Uh, does the, the broader Israeli society see evangelicals in the same way as an ally? I think that most Israelis do, you know, uh, there, there is obviously, I mean, first of all, you know, Israelis are in a way like Americans, they're much more uh, centered on what's happening here and now in Israel than they are on what's happening abroad, although by and large, Israelis are also very aware of uh, the temperature of American support for Israel because the United States is Israel's most important ally. So it, it's hard to say that, um, you know, the average Israeli on the street is going to be able to answer in a sophisticated way about the nature of evangelical American support for Israel or evangelical Christian support for Israel more generally worldwide. But I think that there's a growing understanding of the level of support among evangelical Christians for the Jews and for the Jewish state, and there's an appreciation of that as well. So I think you know, if you wanted me to do a poll, I don't know whether you would get a majority of Israelis who are really aware of it. You would probably get a large plurality. But among the Israelis who are who are more savvy about uh, Israel's international relations, I think that a very large majority would be aware and appreciative of evangelical support for, for our country. 
Yeah, unfortunately, Caroline, I think um, Israelis over the next few years are going to have a uh, get to a point they're going to be longing for an administration that has a close relationship with evangelicals uh, to influence the policy that our country has toward Israel, making it stronger. Caroline, I want to thank you for joining us. We're going to be praying for your safety and for you. all of those there in uh, Israel. Thank you, and God bless you. God bless you, and God bless the United States. And and we just really appreciate so much uh, all that you do uh, for maintaining, maintaining and strengthening the U.S. alliance with Israel.